um, I, I just got an idea one day and I thought, what, you know, there's these military chaplains and I was like, what is that all about? How does that work? How does somebody decide that they're gonna dedicate their life to faith and then join the army? Um, <laughs> so I just set out to <laughs> ask people how that works. And so I just contacted a bunch of chaplains that are based in bases around Canada. And I would spend a lot of time interviewing them to get to the answer. And um, because they're the only army people too that like to talk. So if you've ever met a 20 year old infantry soldier, they don't really speak. And these guys, um, they come in, they're, they have masters of divinity, they're just reflective people in general. So they'll, they'll tend to talk to you about good and evil and they all have a justification for war and they all have a reason for what they do what, or why they do what they do. So, um, so I thought it wasn't enough just to, to photograph them. So I decided I needed some kind of framework and so through the interviews, I asked them all to give me their favorite Bible quote that sort of explains uh, their role as chaplain. So as I'm working it into a book, so there's a lot of references to war in the Bible I didn't know about. Um, so those quotes are getting woven in with the photographs. And then um, I asked them all if I could photograph them while they were praying because um, I thought that would sort of help differentiate them from your average gun-toting toting soldier. Um, and so that's what they're doing. So they're praying. And a lot of them, their job is quite, uh, they might be like more social work. They work in offices. Um, or they'll just randomly play, pray wherever I take them. So wherever the, I, I find some nice light, I'm like, here, come sit here. <laughs> and, um, do you think you can pray? And they're like, oh, sure. And um, <laughs> I was really nervous about that at the beginning because I thought I may be insulting them a little bit um, or a lot. But they seemed, no one said no. So... And I, I learned that there are lots of different ways uh, to pray. I grew up going to Catholic school and we all had to pray with our hands together, kneeling. Um, I thought that was the universal pose of prayer, but some people pray with books or there was the gentleman with his hands out or... Um, so I love this story because there, he's the, this is Padre Danzinger, he's the only Orthodox rabbi in the Canadian forces. And he made the, the keeper himself and the army being very bureaucratic and full of rules didn't take to that too well they're like you can't just go ahead and make pieces of the uniform at will um, so now it's an official part of the uniform you can order one and this is Padre Nelson he's my favorite Padre because he's the only one that said to me he lost his faith he was deployed in Bosnia and his quote to me was I left my faith at the the side of a mass grave so he's about to retire, so I don't think he's too worried about finding it again. But um, so these guys go through a bit of trauma, not quite the same trauma as maybe a foot soldier. Um, Canadian Forces has four imams. This is the very first imam t to join the Canadian Forces. Um, they all have a lot of stories in six minutes. Uh, I don't know if I could tell them, <laughs> but uh, some have been deployed to conflict zones. Some stay. This is a, a chaplain who works in a hospital. Um, um, and what I like about the uniform in particular, because they all wear that relishy green uniform that everybody wears, and they just have that tiny, uh, right where their rank is, so each religion has their different symbol. So it's, you know, if you're just walking by somebody really quick, you're not going to notice it. Um, so I like that it's very subtle. So even though these guys are chaplains and um, because they're in the forces, they have to sort of, it becomes minimized. They, they're not allowed to preach. So they're not allowed to convert you. They're not even really necessarily... Um, I don't know. They're just very subtle about how they bring up issues of faith and stuff. And 
Um, okay, now I feel like I'm just kind of rambling, <laughs> trying to fill in the time. I didn't read the email completely, so I didn't know I, that I had to do this. So I thought I could, six minutes is a really, really, really long time. Um, I, so now, and the, you know, the Army is trying to get more sensitive. They're building multi-faith rooms. And this one is great because it's that old wallpaper. That's probably some scene from Banff or something like that. Um, this is at Downsview, so not far from here, where Downsview, they do all the... I'm a bit uh, suspicious too, like Downsview I think is where they spy on us, it's where they did all the, <laughs> they listened to us. Um, um, <laughs> I might spend too much time with the army people. But um, <laughs> uh, anyway, this, I, I went to see the Navy guys out in Halifax this summer. Um, yeah, Navy, go. <laughs> um, yeah, I found out some guys, so he comes, he's a, a chaplain, but he's not a full, priest. He's Roman Catholic, so maybe this is, this is where, you know, the Catholic Church might have to get things, or, so he wanted to get married, so to, to, he, he got married, he has kids, and, but he can't be a priest, so he joined the army, so he can still be a chaplain. I don't know what the word is, he's like a, a deacon or something like that. Um, um, this is Padre Demare. He presided over the first Islamic funeral in Afghanistan. I, don't know. <laughs> um, I think that's Saint Bernadette. She's the patron saint of children. Um, I just find it weird because you would never be able to have a. I don't think you could get away with that kind of screensaver in a corporate office. There's probably. Um, 